Biblical Truths or Man's Ideas. Welcome to Nugget 391. I see you have a science news for us to digest today. I do. It's the June 2024 edition. I've always told people you can take any science publication off the shelf and you'll find a minimum of about five articles that say something along the lines of what we're just now learning is causing us to rethink what we thought we knew. In this one, I wanted to run through actually several articles because almost every page in there has that same theme. Science and the Challenges of Evidence-Based Forensics Detectives and scientists have a lot in common. Both collect data, develop hypotheses, and test their assumptions and both pursue evidence in the hope of a definitive finding. In this issue, we will examine where forensics fall short and how scientists are working to fix those failures. It's a challenge because the work requires both improving the science itself and bettering public understanding of science for a society that includes judges, prosecution, and defense lawyers and jurors. So I guess we're going to be talking about how science is used in court cases too? That article is in there. What I want to say is on this, it's a challenge because it falls short. And then it says we need to work to improve science and better public understanding of science. I guess that means it's not airtight. That's a good way to put it. This is Nancy Shute, the editor-in-chief of Science News. Oh, your favorite uh, exo, exoplanet, I should say. It's not exoplanet, but exoplanet Pluto. Pluto's heart-shaped basin might not hide an ocean after all. Computer simulations suggest we think it's perplexing. You know, that it, they don't even know if Pluto's a planet. Then how do they know anything about this heart-shaped basin? Yeah, and an asteroid could have slammed into it. This is my point. There's absolutely no consensus on what is the truth of the thing. And this photo is really quite comical because they even admit that that Pluto the planet was discovered the same year that Pluto of Disney was created. You can see it looks like a a poodle or a Pluto right there on the planet in this white blob. Just kind of, you know, just crazy stuff. Knocking a huge hole in one side of a rotating object, such as a dwarf planet or moon, would lead to unstable wobbles that shift the object's tilt, and thus the hole's location, over millions of years. This is what happened to the moon's Aitken Basin, which presently sits near the lunar south pole. How do they know any sentence? How do they know any part of that sentence? They don't. That's my point. They say some scientists have proposed that the impact that created Pluto's heart also created a dense subterranean water ocean. I guess just some other things that you want to point out in this article is that this is an important idea for us to be thinking about. Other researchers have raised doubts about the cool, tiny Pluto having an ocean, so he's happy to see an alternative model. We're just picking out some sentences here so you can see that it's all just up in the air still. Yeah, they actually say that it may be, it doesn't wobble because parts of the asteroid are still in there instead of the water. Next article, Octocorals glow up goes back half a billion years. I don't think so, because we know there's Probably no not. such thing as billions of years. If the octocorals are glowing, it's because God made these creatures just glow and be one of his masterpieces. Some 540 million years ago. Yeah, right. There's no way to know that. The deep, dark ocean was aglow with an eerie light of bioluminescent corals. Well, let me interrupt you. Remember, our son was snorkeling in Grand Cayman and He sent us those photographs, and all that stuff is luminescence. It was really a cool night snorkeling trip. It was beautiful. They say now, our study presents the oldest published record for the appearance of bioluminescence on Earth, and more than doubles the previous record. That means that what anybody might have learned prior is not true now. And they're talking about this chemical reaction with some of the organisms generate light, which can help the organisms hunt prey, attract mates, or hide from predators. The ability to produce light has evolved. What do you think about that? I don't think that's true. Well, of course it's not true. It's (laughs) unscriptural. Exactly. The ability to produce light has evolved at least 100 times across the tree of life, from fishes to corals to fungi. Um, No, it hasn't. It just mysteriously showed up 100 times? That doesn't make sense, does it? No. Based on when glowing species evolved and where in the tree they reside, The team calculated the probability of coral ancestors being bioluminescent. 
bioluminescence may have originated as a byproduct of other more ancient chemical reactions with cells. What is this tree they're talking about? Is this Darwin's tree? Basically, it is um, the tree thinking idea. It's possible that organisms such as algae and comb jellies could have evolved their glow even earlier, but limitations in the fossil record make dating when bioluminescence first arose in these groups a challenge. How do you (laughs) catch bioluminescence in a fossil. Therefore, show it evolved. Much less algae. A hundred times. And, and comb jellies. And, yeah. And I know that we have some of those kinds of fossils, algae fossils. It's just kind of weird to me. How would they explain it? At least we have the flood. We have the mechanisms of the flood that could rapidly bury things such as these and possibly catch them, which we do have. We have seen those. But how do they explain that? There is no other way except for the biblical account of well, Noah's flood. It's true, but you notice this article is all just conjecture and belief. Well, they would say so's the Bible. But what does the evidence point strongly to? Where does it point? Moving on to these um, these interesting characters, aren't they? Look at this guy. <laughs> I think he's called a lamprey. Lampreys have fight or flight cells. The finding upends ideas about nervous system evolution. Finding these nerve cells in lampreys challenged the idea that this part of the nervous system emerged only in jawed vertebrates. After they split from their jawless counterparts millions of years ago, and it puts lampreys closer to complex vertebrates like humans, the conclusion are textbook changing level. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? And That's what I'm talking about all the time. That means the textbooks haven't been right. It's just been what everybody has believed to be right. Still, the findings suggest that the sympathetic nervous system was not an innovation of jawed vertebrates. Huh, well, been waiting I, on that I answer. I kind of think it was an innovation of God. You think? Yeah, well, I yeah. know it that was. That seems to make more sense. Previous studies had already begun to dismantle the idea of a simple nervous system in lampreys. None of this stuff can have simple anything because God made a beautiful, complex creation. Medarios suggest that researchers should now look even further back in evolutionary time at invertebrates to see if they also have sympathetic nerve cells, which could explain how the vertebrate nervous system evolved. They have to go back farther and farther and push the time back in order to make any of their ideas work because nobody was there. It it can't be proven. Well, they're always changing their time forward, backward, because it's incorrect. And like uh, someone said the other day, you make the rules, you can change the rules. True. We would appreciate it if you would subscribe to this channel. The way they approach things, it sure seems to me to add in a lot of intelligence in all kinds of creatures and plants. I kind of want to see one of these guys. He sure is ugly. They're so ugly, they're cute. It looks like he's got shoestrings on the side there, doesn't it? Oh, boy, we're at dinosaurs now. Oh, boy, always dinosaurs. T-Rex's smart scrutinized. A new cell census stirs debate over the dinosaur's brain power. Don't they always talk about how they're stupid? Oh, should I not say that word? Don't they always talk about how they're not as smart as they should be? Don't they call them dumb dinosaurs? Yeah, some do. Some call them that. But notice it says it could have hacked millions or billions of neurons. Do you know the difference between a million and a billion? No, tell me. A bunch. Much less millions, plural, and billions, plural. It's more than three zeros? Well, it's it, not more than three it's zeros, more, but it's exponential what those three more zeros add to that. So oftentimes people will mix millions and billions not realizing what a vast difference there is, and here they are doing that exact same thing. When calculating the number of neurons in extinct theropods, the dinosaur group that includes T. rex, Scientists must decide whether to use neuron densities of birds, reptiles, or some combination of the two. Oh boy, here we go, that bird-reptile thing. But that's, that's an incredible sentence because scientists must decide what does the evidence show. Yeah, shouldn't it be black J- and white? Just make up your mind which one do you want to use and we'll call that a fact. It's crazy. They're obviously linking birds and dinosaurs again. And because of this idea wanting to make dinosaurs and birds related and when we saw remember we've seen t-rexes with chickens at the bottom that's why this scientist here used the neuron densities of modern birds because she felt they're most closely related to the theropods that's just because that's the current idea even if birds are living dinosaurs that assumption is flawed you think gutierrez (laughs) brilliant right adding a broader range of living birds to the comparison of 
brain-to-body ratios brought T. rexes more in line with that of scaled reptiles, he and his colleagues argue. Again, think about this sentence, adding a broader range of living birds. Just Let's just throw a few more in there and make it a little more diverse. Now, if you water it down, it might work out better for it, you. Maybe it will. They say the brain of a T-Rex and many other dinosaurs floated in fluid. I wonder how many fossil fluids they found. Well, it says this is a trait found in modern crocodiles. Well, of course, a reptile is a reptile is a reptile. True, but they still don't know it was in fluid. Gutierrez, Ibanez, and colleagues made a fatal mistake in their assumptions about the brain-to-body ratio that led to the lower cell count. Herculano Housel says, by throwing in distantly related birds like pelicans and penguins, which have fundamentally different brain-to-body ratios, the team arrived at incorrect conclusions, she says. Well, this looks like, you know, when you have two different people, you have three different opinions. Basically, that's true. And the biggest problem is... What they're coming up with is incorrect, so of course someone else can find it to be incorrect because it is incorrect because they're starting with a flawed assumption, and that is evolution. Belugas may communicate via melons. Captive whales can mold forehead fat into five distinct shapes. I mean, these whales are quite amazing, really. They, They say they're the friendliest of any creature in the ocean, and that may well be, but once again, there's a lack of understanding which means the new understanding disputes everything that was taught about them before. Okay, I'm missing something on this. What are melons? I, I know watermelons and, you know, those It's a big are... blob on, of fat on top of their heads. Oh, so they're talking about that they're communicating by shaping, by changing the yeah, shape of the like top of their when, head? Yeah, kind of like when people raise their eyebrows or okay. frown. Yeah, okay, I get it. He's, he's emoting. Emoting, that's a good way to put it. Maybe, maybe that's what they're maybe. doing. Well, I think they're cute. They're communicating all kinds of stuff just by looking at you, aren't they? Next article, hybrid brains pass a smell test. Mouse noggins filled in with rat cells shed light on development. What? (laughs) Do you know how many mice are going to be upset that they're they're sticking rat cells in mouse brains? How nice, huh? But it led to some new results. The new result could lead to insights on the biological limits on brain cell flexibility, Baldwin says. These unusual hybrid brains might also offer hints about how human brains grow, knowledge that could one day lead to treatments for when brain development goes awry. So they've stuck mouse brains, rat brains in a mouse to see what's going to happen? Is this like a double bypass brain transplant? It is, and it might offer hints to how human brains grow. A Stone Age diet was wildly green. Curiously, the hunter-gatherers never grew the plants they ate. The plant-heavy diet of a late Stone Age hunter-gatherer group is challenging a common theory about how agriculture arose. Oh boy, here we go with those carnivore hunter-gatherer guys. Despite dining over a millennia on wild plants such as acorns, pistachios, and oats, the iberio Marosians in what is now Morocco never cultivated them. I want to go to Morocco. Before humans figured out farming, they relied on hunting and gathering, with most protein coming from animals. Well, you know what? The Bible says that, was it Cain a farmer? Wasn't he in the first family? So, so I think farming was, agriculture was right off the bat. Scientists once assumed, huh? Yep. It's all a belief. That is our main point on this whole nugget. Well, once again, we're going through many pages on this one publication. This is all in one. And notice how often it's may, might, could, assume, believe, think. Disagree. Disagree. One of the points is they will just say that they're being honest, which I think that's kind of a I think that's kind of a cover story. But the point is they admit that they don't have it right. They didn't have it right. So why do we think they have it right now? The Bible always has it right, and that's what we want to make the big point of. And it's goes from belugas to lampreys to Stone Age supposed people, and now we're going to talk about planets. And it's, dinosaurs. Don't and dinosaurs, them. yeah. It's every aspect of science. There is some sort of problem for them that they are continuing to attempt to solve. Which means when we learned whatever it was pretty much about any topic is not necessarily believed anymore. And it breaks my heart when I hear young children teaching and talking and spouting off stuff that they've learned that I know isn't true, but they are very dogmatic about it. 
and they might only be 10 years old. And it's such a shame because once they've locked on to that as a truth, it becomes part of their identity. Just like you and me, there are things that we have believed. And sometimes it's just hard to let go of things that are so ingrained in us and to admit that we were wrong or that we believe something that wasn't correct. But we really need to be able to be at that point that when we are shown different information, be willing to accept that maybe we could have been wrong about something. Many of us have had to do that with Christianity. We have been shown more and exposed to more information, and we've grown, and we need to be careful that we don't just take what these scientists say hook, line, and sinker. On this planet thing, these rocky planets, one of the things says here, so some scientists doubt that rocky planets around these stars can hold onto atmospheres. They don't even have a clue. They can't have a clue. But look what it says above it. But scientists still aren't sure. This is June 2024. Scientists still aren't sure what determines whether a rocky body can hold on to a gaseous outer shell. They say the Earth is a rocky body. We have a gaseous outer shell. We have an atmosphere. How is it staying there? Because God told it to. How do gas planets form? Scientists still aren't sure. These are fundamental questions in planetary science that we still haven't answered. And I can bet that when I took astronomy decades ago, that a lot of this was presented to me as fact. Even though I had a really cool professor, I do have to admit he was very candid about a lot of things. But for the most part, the basics of what we think are basics, they're not even accurate because there's no way to test it based on their premise and their assumptions. Okay, investigating crime science. This is sort of what was talked about on the front cover. I was looking forward to getting to this article. People have been wrongly jailed for forensic failures. Scientists are pushing for reform. I remember this was one of the things that really caught me as a young person when I found out that a a guy had been imprisoned and was on death row and was going to be put to death. And he wasn't even at the crime scene. And finally, evidence came out that he was in another city 70 miles away at a Kentucky Fried Chicken or a Church's Fried Chicken. He wasn't even there, but it came out, and he'd already been in prison for like 20 years. It was so sad. And I think we've got a case of that in this article. And it, we do. And it even says on this page, our criminal justice system is generally slow to respond to any kind of science-based innovation. Well, well, that could be good in some cases, uh, that, though. That's the point. It, it probably is good. They know that they've had, based on science, they've, they've incarcerated innocent people. And they talk about this gentleman, Miguel Solorio. Miguel Solorio was convicted in 2000 and was exonerated and released from prison in 2023 after it was determined that the witnesses' memories had been contaminated by repeated lineups. RNA can slice. It can splice. It can perform a rollicking array of genetic gymnastics that scientists may still not fully comprehend. While studying that RNA, sex team discovered something whose existence violated what had been considered to be a bedrock rule of nature. They discovered the ribozymes, RNAs that act like enzymes. Until then, scientists had assumed that all enzymes were proteins, an RNA that could perform the same catalytic features bordered on blasphemy. Interesting choice of words. Obviously, what they thought was not right, according to these researchers. And what he'd come up with was, like, so against the grain, they got they were going to get upset with him, it seems. Well, that's exactly right. We're not going through all these articles and discussing them very deep. It's just my point is how often these articles come up where they ultimately say that what they believed in the past was not true. No matter the topic. We've no gone matter from the topic. RNA to T Rex. And I think you have a couple of loose ends like in this one. A recent study calls into question the long standing assumption that male mammals tend to be larger than females. They're rethinking it. Mammal size rules need rethinking. This newfound longhorn beetle species is surprisingly fluffy. Thousands of species of all kinds are discovered each year at least half of which are insects. I'm actually surprised that this species has not been discovered before. And what's interesting about this to me is in 2023, they found at least over 800 new species. They don't say they evolved from anything else on this earth. 
They just say they found them. I find that amazing. Why didn't they? Why don't they say, oh, this thing must have evolved because we never noticed it before. If this would be a golden opportunity to say these things are newly evolved creatures, whatever, insects, bugs, dinosaurs, plants. Okay, so what you're saying is why don't they act like there's something new that's just popped on the scene? Yeah, to be able to, quote, prove that things evolve. But they don't even talk about that. They say, no, they just found it. Because really, they know it's been here all along. Well, yeah, well, they're going to places that they've never been to before. Not always, though. One of the, the new Jules Fern book that I'm reading, he's going across Africa. And I never realized that it's been in such recent times that most of Africa has been explored. So there's tons of places on this earth that haven't been explored and creatures found. And I guess that's what they're doing. Less than a quarter of the ocean floors have been mapped as of 2023. That's amazing, isn't it? Right. And when you look at pictures in your textbook, it looks like they've got that all sewn oh, up, Oh, it looks it? like they've got it all down pat, but no. All right. Well, again, I hope you put on your critical thinking caps whenever you see or hear anything about creation versus evolution. We would appreciate it if you would subscribe to this channel and tell your friends and family Help us spread the word about creation versus evolution. And if anything has piqued your interest in this, please leave a comment below. We love to get comments. It's all about creation versus evolution. Thank you.